Welcome to a special edition of the Legal Curve Hockey. We're chatting with newly signed, relatively newly signed, CJ Cease, a new slash old face to many who pay attention to the Winnipeg Jets slash Manitoba Moose organization. CJ, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Summer is in full bloom in uh, Winnipeg, although we're having a little bit of a cooler time. But uh, how are things going for you in Minnesota? Oh, they're going good. Um, just getting back into training and skating and uh, just kind of enjoying the summer while it lasts. <laughs> yeah, before you know it, it's already uh, time for the Beauty League. We're seeing that uh, advertising. You were just saying before we got going, you're going to be joining that uh, in part. Which Do you know which team you're on? Are there any Jets or Moose guys on that team? I do not know which team I'm on yet, so I think I'll find that out within the next couple of days here. But, you know, you and I know you've participated in that before, and before we get st- focused on your last year, like maybe just tell it, take us through what it's like to participate in that, because I was listening to an interview Nate Schmidt was doing yesterday uh, with the Rink Live, and he was just talking about the impact he has on the St. Cloud community. You're a Minnesota guy. What does it mean to have that sort of impact with the kids uh, who come to watch you at the Beauty League? It's awesome. You know, it's all about the kids for this kind of situation in the league. Um, you know, you know, all those kids get a smile on their face when they see us coming in and out of the rink. And it, it's honestly fun to play in front of them. You know, it, it's, it makes their day, their night, and um, their summer sometimes when kids of that age can come and see professional hockey players play in their backyard. So it's definitely a cool experience playing in that. And it's, it's good to see fellow players you don't really see throughout because everyone's all over the state. So it's a good time to come together and kind of have fun while playing hockey. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we got to talk about your, your, your year away from Manitoba. You can't get away every time you think you're, you, you're, you're gone. We drag you back in. But you did leave for one year. You, you signed a one-year deal with the San Jose Sharks organization. So uh, maybe how did that come about for you? And, and what was it like being part of a new organization? Um, you know, it was kind of between a few teams. So um, I just thought that would be the best fit for me for next or last year. Um, and it ended up turning out really well. Um, I think I played some good hockey there. Um, and, and it was nice to kind of see a change and see what something else is like and kind of do what's right for my career at the time and um, and kind of see what was out there. Um, and, I mean, the weather, you really can't beat that either. Um, it was nice down there. Um, but, you know, it's, it's definitely a different feel. It's definitely a differently run organization. And um, it's kind of cool to see how different ones are run and how they work. What's it like? I mean, you're, I think you were 28 when you signed that deal. So what's it like to kind of re, kind of have to restart? You'd been four years in the Jets Moose organization. So you're kind of starting from scratch. Did you know anybody going into to the Sharks organization already? And, and again, what was that like for you to have to kind of new day, first day of school sort of mentality? Um, I've always felt like I've been pretty good at changing, kind of meet new people and getting along and kind of, um, kind of working my way into new environments. Um, Luckily, I had Luke Johnson there. Um, mm-hmm. He signed there as well, so that was a familiar face going in. And Luke Coonan was there, so that was nice to know him from before a little bit. So, um, yeah, it was it wasn't too hard of a change. Um, you know, everyone was welcoming, and um, it was a good environment to to walk into, really. Um, and so, so in that case, I I think it was honestly um, kind of kind of an easier transition than I thought it would be. And, and speaking of transition, they, they often say the style of play could be a little different. Here in the AHL, of course, you don't really necessarily see a lot of the, we don't see the North teams unless they're the Canadian teams. You know, you don't see the Pacific teams unless, again, they're the Canadian teams. It's changed. Obviously, you were here before when you would play those teams, but now, of course, it's a little different. Uh, so what was it like for you kind of adapting to that style? Did you notice a big difference in style between the Central and the Pacific? Uh, honestly, it wasn't that too big of a change. Um, I feel like... Uh, in the AHL, everyone always plays hard and is always fighting for those opportunities. So um, maybe a different like kind of pace and kind of not not really pace, but um, I wouldn't say skill different, but just the game, the way the game's played a little bit, um, mm-hmm. kind of less physical, I'd say a little bit. Um, but other than that, I I'd, I'd, I'd say it was pretty similar um, in, in that sense. What was it like uh, checking out those Coachella Firebirds, or Coachella Valley Firebirds? Sorry. <laughs> uh, well, it was, it was awesome going on those road trips, I'll tell you that. It was kind of a cool experience getting to see the, all the West Coast up and down. Um, but, yeah, they were good. Um, we always battled them pretty well. I think we had, I think, three or four good games that we played against them were either one goal games or we lost in overtime. Um, so we always battled them well, and um, we matched up well against them, so it was fun. 
Well, during your year away, you hit a couple of AHL milestones. You played your 200th AHL game. Where does the time go? It seems like, you know, it was just yesterday you were being drafted, I believe, in Philadelphia. And and now, and you got your 100th uh, AHL point. So what did it mean to you to hit those milestones? Obviously, the Moose, you know, formed a big part of that. But, you know, hitting them this year with the uh, the Barracuda. Oh, it's awesome. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a milestone in my career that I'm definitely proud of. Um, it's one of those that you don't really see coming until it hits you. And, and after you're kind of grateful for the time that you do have playing professional hockey and the time that you've kind of spent with teammates and, 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 and the organizations throughout. And you kind of realize that, that it doesn't stay forever and um, that you got to kind of enjoy those moments. And that's what I did. Well, speaking of enjoying moments, you're going to be enjoying a couple more years here in Manitoba. As I alluded to, you're back in the fold, a member of the Manitoba Moose for two more seasons. So I, I guess, how did the deal come about for you and what was the process like? Um, it was pretty good. You know, I feel like they were pretty interested right away. And, um, you know, I was, I was willing to jump on it. Um, I obviously wanted to see what was out there for NHL deals, but this was kind of my first kind of pick of the litter after that kind of went about. And, and are you involved in the process? Like, like I, I guess, take us behind the scenes. What is it like for a player, you know, you become a free agent, you have opportunity in front of you, as you just said, do a number of teams reach out to your agent, then your agent, you have a conversation. Like, what is that process like for those of us not in the know? Yeah, um, pretty much the agent does a lot of the grunt work. He's out there talking to teams and kind of management and organizations, and he kind of brings the best ones back to me, what he thinks are the best fits, and, and I kind of make a decision off of there. And, and settling on a two-year term, how did that come about? Was that was that your end or that end or kind of just a mutual thing there? Um, I think it was a mutual thing. Um, you know, I, I, I realized that this is an organization that knows me and I know them pretty well. And um, it's it's definitely a good fit. So I thought in a second year would be great. Yeah, and, and that's what I was going to ask you about next was that idea of coming back to this organization. It's it's where you've spent the majority of your pro career. Obviously, like I said, the Jets are the team that drafted you. You wore an A for the Moose, so you have a lot of relationships you've built. So what does it mean for you uh, professionally to be able to come back here to Winnipeg? It means a lot, um, and especially um, it means that they enjoyed the person I was too and as well as the player I was um, to kind of come back and give me this opportunity on a two-year deal. So um, it's, it's kind of cool to – kind of be back and see all these familiar faces faces and come back to a place where I'm comfortable at. Um, and I look forward to kind of getting the wheels back on and seeing everyone again. Well, and, and what is that like? Do you maintain those relationships throughout the year? Is it kind of, are you still part of the group chat? How does, do they boot you from the group chat? How does that work, CJ? We don't, again, would this take us behind the scenes? How does it, how does the group chat work when you're no longer a member of the organization? Uh, you still keep in touch, but outside the group chat, I think there's a new one that starts every year. So, um, you kind of <laughs> stay close to certain people and certain teammates, and um, you definitely never really lose all those connections. Um, you always stay close to those who you're closest with while you're playing um, on that team. And, um, yeah, I think it's pretty easy to stay in touch with if you want to with uh, social media and everything now. Well, and one of the things with this, this Moose group, at least, is that there seems to be a lot of continuity. And I mean, sure, they're going to be losing some players like they do every year, but it, there are going to be a lot of familiar faces that you've played with because it was only a year ago. It's not like you're coming back three, four years later and it's a whole new group. You're, you're, you know, most of these guys. And again, maybe some of the young Jets prospects you might not be super familiar with, but for the most part, you're going to be very familiar with both the, the guys and also, of course, the coaches. Exactly. And a lot of the core group I'm, I was really close with. So seeing Jimmy, Jeff, Jonesy, and um, a lot of those guys is, is going to be fun. And so, you know, if you're reflecting back on those those four years that you spent in Winnipeg as part of the Jets slash Moose organization, what what are your kind of best memories of your time here in Winnipeg? Um, I think most of them are off the ice, to be honest, to be completely honest. Um, I, I think just like going out, hanging out, and um, kind of just seeing everyone outside the rink, going to the rec room with the teammates, and, you know, just kind of building those relationships off the ice. And, um you can't beat playoff runs and, and making it into the playoffs and being a part of a winning team. So I think that's kind of the the biggest part is I'm, that I miss is kind of a full team fighting for each other to win and kind of make a run. And that's why we play the game. And um, winning's always more fun, um, no matter how good you're doing. If the team's winning, it's always more fun. And that's, for the most part, we were able to kind of make it into playoffs. We weren't able to do much that first or that last year, but – I think just getting in and, and having that push to to go the extra mile and um, to win something together is awesome. 
And, and you know, and a lot of people kind of lose focus. They think of the AHL, it's only about development. It's not necessarily about winning, but that is a big factor. I mean, guys play the game hard and you know, look, this Moose team, especially during COVID, when you guys couldn't win, play for anything to, you know, really, because you knew it was just to play to get games in, you guys still gave it your all. But that must have been, of course, hard on the psyche. Whereas now you're you're playing for something. And again, that impetus to win, to win a championship, it may not be the Stanley Cup, but to win a Calder Cup is still an important thing for, for players. And I think sometimes people lose focus on that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and in the end, you know, winning and um, going far in playoffs really helps the individual as well. Um, but it, it's the process, I think, that people forget about and kind of the journey it takes to get to those places that really builds the character and gets you in the in it for the long run for your career. So what what are the summer plans? Um, well, got a lot of housework to do. Um, <laughs> do that, kind of get in the gym and keep trucking along that way and get on the ice and kind of prepare for this next year and head back in September. Now, is it as easy as picking up the phone and saying, I want my old place back? Or do you have to start looking anew and <laughs> becoming, a, becoming a Winnipegger all, all over again? Um, it's kind of just deciding where I want to stay this time around. Um, I think my first four years there, I was in a different spot every time. So I think we want to find a spot that we can be for two years and where that's buying a house or renting. So we're still deciding on that end. So I don't know. We'll try to find a good one. And, and again, you know, as I'm not, I'm not going to call you old by any measure, but of course, as you approach that point where you're wanting to set down roots, not necessarily in, in Winnipeg, but even close to your home state of Minnesota, is, is there something to be said for being able to have that permanence and knowing like, okay, we can actually have, you know, we're close. I know you're, you're obviously, um, you have family that's very close together. So you have that opportunity to be, you know, in a place like Winnipeg, but you can be close to Minnesota if you need to. Right. And it's, and it's nice playing in the central division as well, where I can go down to Iowa and we have family and friends coming to watch the games too. So that's big for the mm-hmm. family part of it. And, um, yeah, it's nice being close to home and, um, kind of being in a place where, um, it feels like home and it's similar to it. Now, are there any spots in Winnipeg that you're looking forward to re-engaging and getting, getting back into, I mean, whether it's a restaurant or whether it's a place you like to go, a pub, that sort of thing. What was the, was there anything that you're thinking, okay, well, the, I missed that place and I'm excited to get check it out again. Um, uh, Leopold's a little bit and then uh, nothing, or generate cakes. I miss those and me and my <laughs> fiance used to go grab those as snacks every now and then. So that's a big, big, big place that we miss. All right. Well, though, those two places are going to have to hook you up after you gave them a nice little pr- free promo here, CJ. So we'll have to see if we can get you some uh, January cakes and uh, Leopold's. Well, that's a good little spot. Well, there's a lot of them, but it's a good little spot. And then again, away from the rink, what is what is up for you? Do you uh, like do you golf in the summer? Do you do you fish? What do you what kind of things do you like to do when you're not training? Uh, golfing for sure. Um, like golfing as much as I can. Got a membership up here at Force Lake, so um, it's it's something I. Definitely love doing outside the rink, and I was able to do it quite a bit last year, being in that warm weather. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my passion outside of hockey, and I enjoy it. Now, more importantly, and we're going to wrap it up soon, but are, are you uh, are you prepared for a Winnipeg winter again? Because I mean, you've been away, you've been in that sunny California weather. So how are you? How are you ready for uh, to get back to that your Minnesota roots? I don't think it'll be a problem. I think that's just one short year away from the cold in my entire life. So um, I went through Sioux Falls, Mankato for four years. So I think it'll take maybe a month or two and then I'll be back into it. Okay. Well, we, anyway, CJ, I appreciate you joining us uh, this, today. And we've, you know, we'll, I'm sure the Manitoba Moose and Winnipeg Jets fans will be excited to see you back in Manitoba, uh, applying your trade for the next couple of years for the Manitoba Moose. Awesome. I look forward to it. Okay. Thanks, CJ. Thanks, Dave.